Hello, welcome back to All for United WFC. There you go, everyone got to see Charlie's pen right up close there when she was adjusting the camera. Um, we are finally into match week and all things leading up to it. We've got three previews for you across the week. Today, starting off, uh, just talk about United women in general, where we think we're going to be, the expectations, we're going to be picking our starting eleven as well. We're going to base that off everyone's fully fit, by the way, because we do have a few injuries at the moment. Um, get into all of that, MVP, top scorer, surprise package, all those kind of things. And uh, yeah, Wednesday and Friday, we've got some other shows as well, which I'll come to at the end. Um, so get your comments in over the next kind of hour or so. You know how Mondays work uh, by now. If you if you've been here before and if, if you're new, welcome. Uh, and just just get all your comments in. We'll go through as many as we can over the next kind of hour or so. Um, I just want to briefly start though. Um, obviously for the people who may or may not have seen um, our tweet earlier on today. Um, bit of news um, from us as a channel. Obviously, we have been uh, nominated or made the shortlist for the Football Content Awards for the Best in Women's Football Creators category, uh, which, I mean, uh, Lanzo, really appreciate that from, from you at the start. Obviously, somebody who's been with the channel right from the beginning, by the way. So if if anything happens, Lanzo, you are, this award is just as much yours as it is ours, that is for sure. Um, so, yeah, just a massive thanks for myself, really, and especially to, to obviously these guys on screen. There's a couple of other people that are not on screen that uh, deserve a shout out as well um but yeah it's a, a massive achievement for us i think you know the work that i'm hoping everyone can see that goes into the channel you know not just on on the youtube channel on the twitter pages and things like that and particularly this guy to my left or right he i didn't say it on the last week's show he's done over 100 shows already just this year over both channels so that's pretty uh pretty impressive he's got his 100 caps for the year <laughs> Um, I'm short. I'm, I'm not far behind. I think I'm on 89 or something like that. So I should hit it in the next few weeks. Um, so yeah, just a massive thank you for myself. It's something we didn't really expect. Not going to lie. Um, so yeah, onwards and upwards. And we'll, uh, we'll see how we go. The details on how to vote is in the description. I'm trying to find out if you can vote on Twitter. Um, not entirely sure at the moment, but there is a web link uh, and the Instagram link as well. So you can vote on there on that one. And yeah, appreciate Ellie. Emma, really appreciate all that. It's uh, Certainly means a lot. Um, Barry's unmuted himself. I don't know whether he's... I'm right. unmuting myself because you're not going to say it, so I'll be the one to say it because none of this is possible. It doesn't happen without... Oh, hello. What's she grabbing there? Just grabbing there. That was amazing. I was like, oh, get out of the way. <laughs> oh. Throw me off a little bit, as. But there we go. He's not going to say it. Let's be brutally honest. Um, you know, Connor took over from John and as, as well as that, um, as he took over, what he made happen here was, to me, absolutely superb. The level of effort that this chat puts in is absolutely ridiculous. Um, what people don't see are the WhatsApp messages, the, the voice notes. Just thank the Lord you don't have to listen to these voice notes. They're usually involving some form of anger at a car that's in front of them. Um, but let's be brutal. It's it, Without him this place would not be running at the level it is currently running at. You know, there are lots of people helping, but I think what's brilliant and what I've noticed more than anything else is how much people have come to support this channel, whether they're Manchester United fans or not. And, and really, I think for me, that's the big thing is that there's so many people that are understanding that fan cams don't have to be all sensationalist. They don't have to be, you know, constantly shouting and, and screaming for people to come out. I think that actually what's really important here is that people are noticing that just being able to have good old fashioned football banter, chat around, have a good time with your mates. And that's what this place is. So well done, Connor. Um, you're a legend. Oh, no, I appreciate that. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to let Vic or Charlie add to that because I think I'll start going, I'll go fully red and uh, again, all embarrassed if, uh, if we do, but no, I really appreciate it. It's, uh, it's my little passion project. And I think, and, Highland, appreciate that as well. Um, somebody else who's been been with us for for a long, long time as well. It's uh, yeah. I think Meg, who will be on the show on Wednesday, by the way, um, summed up perfectly. You know, made a lot of friends through this channel, and, and me included. Pretty much everyone I speak to now on the daily basis, three of them are on screen, <laughs> and the other lot are in the comments. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the biggest thing for me. Whatever happens now, it's this was. A massive I didn't think it was in the contract. I had to be friends with you as well. Was that <laughs> was that in the small print somewhere? You must have missed that one. I've made you. I've tied you down to a ten-year deal on that. <laughs> Always. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So yeah, yeah. Massive thanks to obviously Barry, what you just said there, and, and to everyone else. Like I said, whatever happens now, it's 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 a win for us, and we will continue going on doing what we're doing, regardless of what happens. And that's why you're all here to to watch us talk about United. Um, 
which is an absolute no. <laughs> this is just unacceptable unless you're doing it for charity, is my answer for that. No, it's just, it's not, it shouldn't be done. I've, I've been roasted all day. I feel like if we win the award, he should be live on here eating the burger without the knife and fork. I feel it's the other way around because that's what the people want to see, isn't it? Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> we'll see how that one goes. Um, Standing point, that one. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I don't know where to start after all of that. I've got to be honest. Um, Charlie, welcome back. I'll throw it over to yourself first. And just uh, thanks for obviously coming back on. Usual back on a, on a Mondays, obviously, uh, mm -hmm. as we get into the season now. But I've just asked you straight from the off. How are you feeling going into the season? Obviously, we're finally into match week. It's it's felt like a, it's felt like an age since we've seen the obviously United women. But how are you feeling? I guess ahead of the season, are you confident? Are you excited? Obviously, all those kind of emotions are. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's felt like forever, hasn't it? Like a ridiculous length of time. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm feeling optimistic um, about what we can achieve. Uh, we won't go, I know we're going to it later, but just trying to put together like an ideal starting 11 and having loads of um, positions where you've got two almost world class players in, in a position is, is reason for optimism, I think. And then looking at your potential um, backup string is in some ways maybe better than our starting 11 last year when you put all your best players in so yeah i'm really really excited for it um lots of new talent have joined the club um lots of players may we maybe perhaps didn't get to see last year um uh, fingers crossed jade's fit soon and we'll get to see them so yeah loads of reason for optimism i just can't wait for it to happen to be honest um and i'm excited by the start we've got going straight in uh three or four really tough games which i think will really test our metal so yeah lots of reason for excitement I was going to say, it's certainly going to, it, it literally, when I, I, we were talking about this, I think it was on Barry's Fans Forum a few weeks ago, and we looked at that first few games, it's like, oof, it's right from the off, you know, Villa, Arsenal, two PSG games, and obviously I think it's Leicester and Everton, I think, either side of, of those ones. Um, but Vic, for yourself, thanks for coming back on. I, don't, I can't remember the last time you were on, I think it was pre-World Cup, actually. Um, might be with yeah. the Lioness, I think. Um, so yeah. thanks for coming back on. Uh, how are you feeling ahead of the new season? I'm feeling good, just want to get it started now. Um, six more days. I've got a countdown. I cannot wait for Sunday. And yeah, I'm feeling really good. I actually feel like, like Charlie said, then like this starting eleven, I have changed it probably about six, seven times. Like I was thinking about it before we came on the show, and I was like, okay, I could do this. We could do this. And like, it's really nice having that depth in the squad that we've got now, which I feel like we didn't have as much last season. Um. And yeah, I feel like this is the strongest squad that Man United have had so far. And it needs to be because we've got Champions League. So I'm feeling really good. Yeah, I mean, Baron, if you saw me, sport, it makes a really good point here. You know, obviously, as, as a fan base, obviously, everyone's excited. It's a new season. You always have those kind of things. But there has been a little bit of, obviously, the online talk. Obviously, Mary Earps is mainly focused around because, obviously, that was rumbling on all summer. She is still a United player, so, obviously, she'll get our, our full back in while she is here. Whether she decides to extend past that, obviously, we don't know. Um, but how, are you excited for the season? Are you a little bit worried that there's this online talk, you know, that there's a little bit of concern? Because as Hyna said, I think it was, the, it was the Athletic article this morning talking about, obviously, the Earps thing, and there were some other things going out. Or do you just think this is a media thing that, you know, it's United Women, you know, anything's going to get clicked on that front, so it's quite easy. But have you let that kind of enter your mindset going into your season, or are you just looking at it as, yeah, as excited as last year? Hated, adored, never ignored. And I think that's basically what I'd say for that. The fact that the women's team is starting to get a similar sort of level of press as the men's team seem to get every time something happens just goes to show the rise that we're having in women's football for me. I think the Mary Earps thing is difficult. Uh, when we get to the, the starting 11, I'll, I'll enter into that a little bit further. But I think really it, it's always going to happen. There's always talk. This time last season, the chat was all about Nikita Paris. So, you know, people will go crazy over whatever it is they can find to go crazy over. Um, there wasn't all that much, really. Talking about not replacing Martin Ho. I mean, we've still got Charlotte in, so I'm not convinced that, you know, Charlotte Healy, I don't think that's going to be a major drama. I feel like she'll probably just naturally step up into the role because she spent plenty of time around there as well. I feel that we, as a club, have got a lot to look forward to. It's just exciting. 
Like the start of the season is literally six days away. And I think the most depressing thing about all of this is that it's in October. Like I can't believe it. It was weird. I was talking to my mum on the phone on the way home from work today. And she was saying oh, it could still be hot in October. And I'm like, I can't believe it. It's October next week. And it was baking at the weekend. It's like, it's ridiculous. Where, what's happened to the cold? What's going on? Even when the nights are drawing in, everything's weird. And it feels weird that we haven't even started the WSL season. Yet in most other leagues, like the one that Stephen had drew, we just, play, we just played our fifth game. So it is a bit weird. I'm not a fan of the fact we had to have this stupid international break as well. Um, I, I, I didn't watch it out of protest and I won't watch it on Tuesday. It's not even yet. finished yet. That's the mental thing. That's what I mean. I'm annoyed by it. I'm like, I don't think it should be there. So I'm not even going to give them the eyes. I'll just check what's going on. Having said that, I was really annoyed at Sky Sports because on their um, results page that you get on the app, they usually keep up to date with what's going on. They had an American game in an international friendly. Couldn't find hide nor hair of the Nations League for the women. It was not on their page. So they need to do better. Um, but yeah, can't wait. Six days away before we can smash Kirsty Hansen and co um, and beat the United Rejects. I mean, United B. I mean, <laughs> <that's the word. laughs> we said in, don't write in. It's going to be a fun show on Friday when we talk all about Aston Villa in a lot more detail with uh, with Freya and Lindsay talking about that one, uh, defending their uh, their villains over there. Um, obviously, a lot of chat about certain games. I was talking about PSG as well. There's obviously a huge game coming up for us and the uh, yeah, it's going to be. I'm not going to give the international break any more airtime because I feel like we spoke about that an awful lot. As I say, it's not even over yet, and it's just annoying. Um, obviously, yeah, Emma Watson's obviously now injured as well. I, I don't know. I can't. I don't think I can sit on here, but it, I think we'll see what happens with with her. But I don't think it's going to affect our squad too much. You should not just use the time turn and go back in and jump over the tackle that caused the problem. What's the point of a bloody necklace if you don't use it? Honestly, Dumbledore would be gutted. <laughs> um, back to the, <laughs> the serious one. Um, Charlie, for yourself then, before we kind of go into our what we want our starting 11 to be is, uh, uh, between the four of us and the, and the people in the comments, um, a question I was going to ask, has your expectations changed since the transfer window? Obviously, we've had a pretty good one, I think most fans would say. Before the transfer window, obviously, you would have had expectations for next season off, off the back of last season. Has yours changed at all going into this season off the back of the signs we've made and the ones we've let go? Or are you pretty much similar to where you were at the end of last season? Um, our, well, my expectation is um, top three again. Um, obviously, Arsenal have massively strengthened as of Chelsea because they buy everyone else, don't they? But United and Arsenal don't buy. City haven't done very much. So I'd hope for top three. Um, I would love to win a trophy. Everyone loves to win a trophy, don't they? How lovely was it last season when Eric's Tricky Reds won, won the Carabao Cup? That was lovely, wasn't it? That was really nice. Um, but I wouldn't hang my hat on Mark Skinner keeping his job based on that. I think lots of people are saying if he doesn't win a trophy, he should be out. Because you could, you could be in an FA Cup final against Chelsea and everyone scored their penalty and then you're hanging your hat on a goalkeeper scoring theirs. And you're, you're basing whether a manager keeps his job based on if that goalkeeper scores a penalty. So I'd love to win a trophy. I don't think he should lose his job if we don't win a trophy. I'm just going to put that out there straight away. Um, but yeah, top top four is a top four, uh, sorry top three is an absolute must. Um, and all I'm thinking about at the moment is getting past PSG. That's that's the thing for me is making a good start, getting past them. And then by the end of October, being in the Champions League proper, because that, that will be massive. I think with the squad we've got, we can absolutely do that as well. There's, I think there's no reason we can't. On our day, on our bet, if we put in our best performance, um, we can beat them. So getting into the Champions League proper is the short term, and it has to be top three. And again, pushing Chelsea all the way, or pushing Arsenal, whoever, whoever's up there with us, um, I don't want anyone winning the league unless it's another over us, unless it's another um, points record. Is what I would say. Um, now certainly, when you when you measure improvement, obviously, if we're going for that, that, that would measure obviously improvement, pushing another team to another points record to be able to get there. Um, but Vic, for yourself, what's your kind of expectations for the season? Have they changed at all after seeing the signings and outgoings? What are you kind of feeling on that front? Well, I mean, up until a few weeks ago, I was like, "What are we actually going to do?" So. My expectations have definitely changed, but for me, is to just beat Emma Hayes and Chelsea. 
<laughs> literally that is all I want um I think you know if we can do that then we can do absolutely everything and anything um it's nice to get a win it'd be nice to get a win at Wembley um that's definitely on the bucket list and I'm sure it is for plenty of the players as well um and yeah that is I expect them I expect the unexpected so that is what I'm saying and I'm hoping for I'm hoping the unexpected is going to be no one thinks that they can win the title and the expected is going to be that we are going to win it see I like that I like that I, yeah. I will just quickly bring up uh, Marcus's comment here 127 goals or have I read that wrong and you no, mean like <laughs> I saw that I was a bit surprised <laughs> I mean what? if she hits that we should win the league <laughs> That's six a game. Well, that's four goals a game, maybe, depending on how many games you play. If we play 30, that's, that's a lot of goals. Well, I think he's just talking the league, so it's about six. Why not? I mean, we, I know we've got a pretty stacked forward line. <laughs> I'm, I'm not so sure about that one. Um, Barry, for yourself, you're kind of expecting, obviously, you were famously last season pushing that, that we're going to win the title for since the very beginning obviously this season i think there might be a few more that join you on that front obviously after what we saw last year are you hoping for similar on that front obviously you get that obviously hoping that we go on better obviously in the in the league but what's your kind of expectations as a, as a whole for this season well as you know i'm always hoping I, I was incredibly clear last year that we were going to win the league um this season i'm not quite going to hang my hat on that particular hook like i did last time um, I think mainly because there's there's so many more changes <clears throat> that have happened within the team. Um, it's not to say I don't think we can, but I'm I'm, I'm very much with Charlie. I, I worry that, that Mark Skinner gets a bit of a bum deal, really, because people seem to think that, for some reason, that he's not the manager for us. And I, I completely disagree. I think he's shown absolutely that he can do the job, that he does the job well, <clears throat> that he's well-liked by people that work hard and and buy into the ethic of, of Manchester United. So for me, Mark Skinner just needs to <clears throat> continue doing what he's doing. I agree with Charlie, it's got to be top three. Um, again, would I kick him out if we finish fourth? No, because I actually think the one thing that's been noticed about women's football throughout the entire pyramid is that it's getting stronger. You've only got to look at what Aston Villa have done. You know, I, I laughed and joked earlier, but they were really strengthened this season. And I really do feel like they could potentially be the new United, by which I mean how they, they get into that bit just outside of the Champions League spots to begin with and really start to challenge for the top three and, and, and shake it up a bit. So I, I would I would hope for top three, absolutely. I think that's what we want. Um, more than that, we need to make the Champions League this season proper. Um, it needs a strong word, but I think just making it and then just having the two games, it's nice. But ultimately, we want that to be a week in, week out thing. So for me, that's where I want. So my expectations really are that we make it to the Champions League group stage, <clears throat> see how we get on. It's a lottery from that point on, really. Um, and like Charlie says, of course, everyone would love to win a, tire, a, a trophy of some sort. We were superb in the FA Cup last season, really, and we were unlucky. We were literally a cat's whisker away from taking the lead within the first minute. You know, the first few minutes, it was unreal. Just an absolutely unbelievable start. And the world went mad. <clears throat> and then, of course, it was disallowed, which was depressing. But that goes in. I reckon you've got a different game altogether. So, yeah, I, I think the expectations for me has to be that. I mean, Lanzel was saying, you know, I have confidence we're going to win the league. Let's go. I want us to, but you're asking me what I expect. I don't expect us to win the league. Um, I didn't expect us to win the league last season. I was just incredibly confident that we would. Um, I think I need to watch a match before I can get that level of confidence this season because we haven't seen anything behind closed doors. You know, all of the matches have been hidden away from us. Beforehand, we saw all the pre-season stuff and you could see what Skinner was doing. So it's a little bit easier to sit there and go, like, look at this team, we've got it. I couldn't tell you right now. I've picked me 11. It'll be very interesting to see how it mixes up with other people's because for me, there's a level of, I've not seen you in training. I've not seen you in pre-season friendlies. I've got very little to base it on. I think you make a really good point there, actually, in terms of the, the, the stability last season was very evident, you know, through pre-season, through the back end of the season prior, through pre-season and into last. 
Obviously, there was a lot of talk about the rotation last season. We're going to need, obviously, more of that should we get to the Champions League group stages. But there was a stable side there. This year, obviously, with Honor and, and Roos, obviously, Mary's contract's kind of up in the air as well. We will see newer players coming in, and it's going to be how quickly they can adapt into the team, into the system, and into the league as well, because obviously a lot of them have come from, from different leagues as well. So I think that's going to be the key. I think my expectation, I think top three is a minimum. That, that's a given now. I think every season we go into, top three should be the minimum. Um, it's unfortunate for the side that misses out, because I think all four of those sides um, are capable in the Champions League. Um, and certainly get into the Champions League group stages. But, you know, we have been drawn one of the hardest teams in there. So I think if we don't get there, I, I, I don't... It depends how we lose, really. But if we don't make it through. But I feel like if we don't, I don't want to see a massive overreaction just yet. It depends, obviously, how the rest of the season goes from there. So I'll come back to winning a trophy just a little bit because I want to obviously ask that question to because I've seen a lot of talk online about this, that a trophy is a must. So I will come back to that after we've done our 11. So let's move on to that then because this is going to be, a, I guess, a... These are usually hotly debated because a lot of people have a lot of passion when they're picking up and, to be here for a while. <laughs> and all those kinds of things as well. So as we go through, obviously, get your comments in. We'll we'll, we'll take, obviously, your comments into account here because, obviously, there's four of us on screen. So we're going to have a split if uh, on occasion uh, with, with certain players. So I'll just share my screen if you give me two seconds. Here we go. So we've got the 4-2-3-1 back up in position because that is what we're expecting to see obviously going into next season that could be a 4-3-3 4-2-3 however you want to look at it that's kind of what we're going for um so we'll start at the back then so we're basing this off everyone is fully fit obviously we know that jade's out at the moment emma watson's also out at the moment and um, we're basing this off if they were fit and ready to go um so starting off in goal are we going to go for a clean sweep of herbs or are we going to start putting fallon in from the off um I I'll throw it out to you guys. Let's see. Let's see what people are saying first, and then we'll start debating if there is a debate to be had on this one. Don't know who wants to stick their um, neck out first. I, I, I think if Mary Oates's head is in the game and she's fully committed, then I would start her, and I'm just basing it on that. So I'm going to assume that she's all in. She's going to be playing the best football she's been playing for for a year or so, and we'll get the best version of her. I think if that's the case, she must start. For me. Do you think Vic? Is that me? Sorry. Yep, you're Vic. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so I was all for Fallon, but well I wasn't, I was all for Ertz and then I was all for Fallon and now and now I'm still swaying. But after the interview she did the other night, Ertz, I mean, I'm sticking with Ertz. Mm -hmm. Because I do actually believe that she's back with it, hopefully. I feel like she's taken some things on board and, you know, at the end of the day, we've got her till January. So if she mm. wants to be signed by a big club, she's going to have to keep playing her best football to be signed by a big club. So she's going to have to play for someone. And, yeah, I'm, I'm going to believe in her. I am so Natalie Imbruglia, it's unbelievable. I, I am so torn, it's untrue. And I'll tell you for why. We've said for decades as Manchester United fans that we only want players that want to play for the club. <clears throat> and I find myself in an unenviable, uh, unenviable position insofar as if Mary's going to do a lessee, which is to play for the season and be professional, but ultimately just go off to Arsenal um, just for the lows. Then don't play. She doesn't play. Yeah. If she wants to go in January, then she doesn't play. I would rather, genuinely, and I can't even believe I'm about to say this because she's literally in my top three favourite players, but I would genuinely rather have her on the bench and play the player that is likely to be our goalkeeper next season. And if that person is Mary Earps, I'm all for it because that woman is one of the best goalkeepers I've ever seen in my life. And I'm putting that across both genders. Unreal. She's absolutely unbelievable. But if she's really not with it, and don't get me wrong, I think she can be professional. But if she genuinely believes that she's going to make it to the end of the season and then she's going to go elsewhere, I don't want her in goal. Because I would rather 
blood PTJ in there, get her sorted so that she's there. The defence can get used to her and we might do with that this season and do with it as we will. Exactly. See, the dog agrees too. So I would rather do that. So that's right. That's the bit where we struggle. because We will never know. Yeah. Mary, that's that's just you know, I, 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 yeah, I, well, just looking at it from a football performance point of view is why I would go her. But I think you're saying, Barry, about her, you think she can be professional. There was always that little bit of me that's uncomfortable now because I feel like at times she, she hasn't been. So it sounds ridiculous, but liking tweets of Arsenal men beating Man United men doesn't, sit completely right with me um I, I would i would do if she if she's not a son it might be they, they see if she's going to sign a contract you never know what's going to happen in football we thought rooney was going all those years ago and then lo and behold he signs a a new contract doesn't he for fergie um but you know what i love about it charlie is that this yeah. season we've got a genuine option yeah like, i really last season we'll be, going... be sitting there going well regardless of what happens it's mary yeah. sophie bagley doesn't have what it takes at yeah. this pressure cooker level that we're at yeah. And quite frankly, we're now in a situation where actually we can genuinely go, no, go and sit yourself down on the bench over there. We've got somebody else who could be able to take over. We have, and she's huge. She's ginormous. She's big. Yeah. Uh, another thing I was going to say, exactly the same thing with you, Barry, the fact that um, for one, what either way, what a goalkeeper you would have on your bench, like if we needed them, you know, get them in and they'd both be fab. But another thing I was going to say, even if um, we do start ups, I think, you know, Fallon needs to be, if we get that Champions League spot, they need to be kind of not taking turns as such, but we need to be getting her introduced. And like you said, to the defenders as well, because they all trust Mary and they need to start to trust Fallon. And, you know, it, it's not going to work if they've not got the connection and they're not practising with Fallon as well. Um, and playing with her. So I do think, you know, if she is going to leave in January, like you said, um, they need to get used to Fallon as well. And it's an interesting one for Mary because genuinely, will Serena Wiegman pick her if we put her on the bench for a season and don't play her and just yes. keep her as a backup? Yes. And you imagine that she would, but mm. I think that'd be an interesting situation. Does she go down the Southgate route of picking a Maguire and just going, well, I'm going to pick that one because they're good? Or does she sit there and go, well, actually, she's not playing for her club, so therefore we're going to pick somebody else, you know, Hannah Hampton, Ellie Roebuck, someone like that. And for me, that's how it should be. And, and I like that because that's a jeopardy for her because Man United helped her to become England's number one. I think it's horrifically poetic that we could also be in a situation where we could effectively knock her back down again if she chooses not to. It's interesting. You see people here going, you know, Mary's never let us down, all that sort of thing. But it's not about whether she's let us down or not to me. I think for me, we're just in a situation now where if people are not fully focused on the job and they're just going to play us around, for me, we whack, a, we whack a contract down. Now, this very second, well, maybe not this second because they need to write it up. I'll, I'll give them till tomorrow. They can do it tomorrow. Pop a contract and I'm just go, right, Mary, sign that, please. And she might say... Can we wait and see if we get into the Champions League? Go, right, we'll give you that. We'll give you a month. In a month's time, we're coming back. And if we're in the Champions League, because we've got past PSG, we give that to her and we go, there you go. Are you going to sign it? And if she says no, then we go, that's fine. You know where you are. You know where you lie. And we've got to stop allowing the players to dictate to us now what we're doing, because the squad depth is getting ridiculous. It's good. So you don't want to be here. You don't have to be here. It's absolutely your choice. But to me... What we don't do is just leave it, leave it, leave it and hope that by the time we get to the end of the season, she signs that contract because, as we've already proven, that doesn't seem to work. The people behind the scenes are not qualified and adept enough to be able to sort out contracts, it appears. So as a result, they've got to sort themselves out. So for me, I'm quite happy. It, it's, yeah. it's, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you a, a, a quick follow one on the goalkeeper in a second. Just, there's, Vic, there's a comment directed straight to you here. Um, uh, obviously, it, there is a spelling error in there, but has has uh, is Vic or has? Sorry, there's so, there's a few spelling. He has corrected himself for now. Talk to, to, about your mic. Apparently, it's a little bit muffled. So, now what's going on there in terms of whether <laughs> I've not noticed it to be honest, but can you still hear me now? Yeah, it might yeah. just be my voice. <laughs> there's there's a there's a little bit of a crackle in there. So whether that's coming through a little bit louder on the broadcast, I'm not entirely sure. So whether you can change it from that. 
I'm not sure. Maybe I can like stand forward a bit. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but so obviously Lanzo's now in the comments saying he's changed his mind. Obviously, uh, I'm very torn on this one as well. So I think this was always going to be a lot closer than, than maybe some people thought. So I'll ask you each a question then. We've got Chelsea tomorrow, fully fixed squad. Everyone's ready. Who are you putting in goal? Erps. Erps. I've not seen. I can't help it. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm not convinced at the minute. Based on what I've seen, I'm going PTJ. I can't believe I've just said that. I might need to lie down. I'm, oh, I'm kind of inclined to agree with you, Barry. I really am. Because it... It's such a tough one, isn't it? Because it's... I agree with what you said, but I think Mary Epps is one of the best keepers we've seen, you know, in, in women's football. And when you watch her and, and everything, I'm just a little bit worried with the stuff that went on over the summer. And I know people can say, you know, it's all hearsay and, you know, it, it's stuff that's reported and, you know, what she said and it, it's, it's okay. But I think oh, that's such a tough one. This. I, I hope, I, um, I have to say, I hope Mark is having this exact same question in his head. I really don't think he will be, but I hope he is because I'd like Fallon to be up there. I'd like Fallon to start, but I just think she won't. I, I'm going to go with a slightly, purely off the basis that I feel like I mentioned obviously at the start uh, or a few minutes ago or whatever that we've had a lot of changes in this squad. Yeah. If we change too much, Early on, I feel like there could be a bit of an issue. However, I will say that I think Fallon should be playing a lot more um, games up until January in case she does leave, uh, Mary. Then we've got somebody who's already got, as Vic said, already got those relationships with the centre backs and the full backs, already got that relationship there with the team to just go straight in. So, yeah, I will put Herbs in. So, we've got, and there is people in the, a lot of people in the comments are saying Herbs, but I think we, when we get to January, I think we might be having a different conversation. Uh, when it gets down, I think everybody knows that she's the one who probably will start. You know, I mean, Annabelle in April, which, whichever one it is that's writing. Um, <laughs> I'm reacting like a proper fan, but our heart rules our head sometimes, and it does. But I'm, I'm just in that situation. If she's not going to sign, then we, we weren't in that position last season. Last season, we virtually had to go in, cap in hands. Oh, please sign for us. Please, Leslie. It'd be lovely if you stayed. And look who we brought in. Now we're in a case of, well, if you don't want to sign, there's the door. And I think we do need to get to that point. Whether we're at that point now, because you make a good point about the difference, and I'm probably just going to, when it comes to our next conversation, I'm probably going to just entirely undermine what it is that I was going to say. But, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm annoyed and I, I need to see, need to see something. So in other words, Mary, take your blinking gloves off and just sign the contract. <laughs> It's going to be a f an interesting few months around Mary Earps, that is for sure, uh, on her. So just keeping on what, what develops over the coming weeks and months on that one. Um, right, so moving on to the defence, can we just get one name in here from the office? Is Leticia in from all of us? Yes. She, like, that's just a no-brainer, right? She's in. No, right she didn't make it to the World Cup. She doesn't deserve to play. Of really. course <laughs> oh, she does. Put her in. Right centre back. back. Right. Yeah, yeah we're, not, we're not messing about and we're no right back and all this kind of stuff. She's going in there, right? They're not. Turner as well, no? no oh, Turner's not I, uh, nine. I, uh, I go Turner just because she's never going to be called up for England for some reason. So she's going to be so well rested as well. She's not going to have those stupid, I stupid agree. international breaks. Mm -hmm. And she's got a good relationship with um, Leticia. Yeah. I, I would literally left back Blundell, Turner, May Leticia. Because yeah. Yeah. this, this is where I look like a complete idiot. Why change something that worked so well and gave us oh, well, the best defence in the league last yeah. season? Yeah, that was my thoughts exactly. Why change it when it's so good? See, oh, here we go. Right, I'll throw my little curveball in you then. So, oh, yeah, I was so what are you going to tell us? We can only have three Man United players <laughs> that aren't out the lionesses. What's happening now? <laughs> but um, obviously, this is obviously going to Blundell. I think is in from all of us, but I think it's going to depend on right or left back, depending obviously. We are going. I see Devery your comment about no Jade. We're basing this on if everyone's fully fit, so Jade is available in our in our little selection. Um, but obviously, it's going to depend on whether people want Gabby George in over Jade or whether so that would push Blundell to right back and so on. Um, because George obviously did play left back for, for Everton last season, but for that left centre back, I, I think Ethan Mannion 
is a better defender than Millie Turner on her day. However, I will contra I will on the contrary to that agree with what you guys were just saying there that I think Millie Turner and Letitia obviously had a great partnership last season um together. And let's see, Lanzell's with me. I knew he would be a fully fit Manion. I think she goes. I agree. I think Manion, if she's fully fit, I think goes in at number two. But we've not seen that consistency enough from Manion yet because of her injury issues and for other things that obviously has been has been going on. So I'm not against putting Turner in, but I, I wanted to give Manion a mention because I feel like she's not far behind pushing Turner next season. To Especially fair, with the games. There was a game I watched Manion um, at LSB last year and she was insane. I don't know what had happened to um, Turner. It was Arsenal, know. wasn't it? She came back for like one game, didn't she? It was Arsenal at LSV at the back end of the season. Yeah, yeah I, know, I know Turner had a, um, a quad strapped up. And I was like, oh, she must be injured. But she came on for like two minutes at the end. But she had the game of her life. I've never seen a play like that. It was really, really good. Uh, but I'd still choose Turner over her any day. No offence. I'll just point out this comment here. Any of us ever been able to take Connor seriously? I mean, since the moment he told us about knives and forks for burgers, and then he started talking about films he's never seen. Um, so I, I don't think that should be the bar if I want to see here. But oh. yeah, I, I'm get, I get fucking roasted for all kinds of things. So we'll... <laughs> nobody I'm takes sorry, me seriously. No, I'll Just put Jamie in right back. So that's my four: Blundell, Letitia, Turner. Rivier. I think Turner's got a good goal scoring threat now as well. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm not against it. As I said, I just wanted to throw Mannion's name in there. Just to, <laughs> just to uh, yeah, as I Blundell. said, man of the match versus... I'd Arsenal maybe pop Blundell on the other yeah. side because I'm going to throw my hat in and say Gabby George for me. Me too. Right, right, and George left back. Left back, Hannah at right back. Isn't Hannah originally a right back? Yeah. She yeah, has. She, she played in the right before she came to United for yeah. a bit as well. So, And also she's right-footed as well. So you know that would help what we yeah. obviously George, were losing him with honour. George on that left hand side would, but that would be my two purely because I just don't. I really like Jade and I've really got high hopes for her. But, but I, if you're asking me at the moment, she's just too injury prone. She's just always getting injured. It's the same reason, I guess, for Mannion why she probably doesn't make it because <laughs> um, <laughs> it's the same reason. Um, uh, I've lost my train of thought. Now. But yeah, for, for me, it would be George and Blundell as well at the yeah. moment. But I think as the season goes on, I think it would probably change to Riviere depending on, on how she. Uh, if she can stay fit, to be honest, and, and see it is good is. though in both positions that we have got another player that we can we can have, which last year we didn't really have. I personally didn't think that we could just throw another good one in there. So I think that's good that we have got options now. I, I can't believe that's very quick. I can't believe someone picked up on that. Sorry, <laughs> I don't. I don't know why. I, it's yes, the first time we've done it. Devin Devin Harris, Harris, WFC. Yeah. Honestly, he's got such a potty mouth. It's unreal. I know. I, can't believe I did that. <laughs> Shocking. Um, and I'm I'm ignoring the uh, the car instant comments as well. That I can see that you're both alluding to <laughs> in the comments. We don't want no rumours starting on it, um, even though they, they do. It's happen, terrible, isn't it? They're piling in. You're piling up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, there's a question. Obviously, Deb was asking you, Charlie, who yep. the tanks are in defence. Oh, who the tanks are in defence? Mayor Letizia is a tank. She's built like a fridge. Have you seen the shape of her? Um, <laughs> I don't think she'd like that. No, but I mean like <laughs> stacked, isn't she? I'd give her Millie Turner's not a tank. She's if you're going just tank looking, you're gonna go E for Manion, aren't you? But I'd yeah. So that Gabby George. You could have me. a tank eleven. She... An eleven of tanks because we're Gab huge now. Absolutely. Gabby George is really powerful and strong. She's a tank. Her. Leah Golton's a tank. Rachel Williams is a tank. Nelson is a tank. We've got loads of them. And everyone saw Garcia whip her top off at that derby at LSV. She's a tank. Absolutely <laughs> huge units. Oh, anyway, um, right. Rachel Williams is a tank. Nelson is a tank. Garcia is a tank. And May Letitia is a fridge. <laughs> fridge. <laughs> It's not even a fridge freezer. A fridge. Does that mean you're just never quite sure whether the light's off when you shut the door? <laughs> I, I, 
I can't even. I don't. Mary, if, Mary, if you are what? Won't get bullied now. I think Lanzel say won't get bullied. We won't get bullied. No, I agree. And, and Mayor, if you're watching this, apologies. United, that, was yeah. that was a compliment, my child. That was a compliment. Another stay at home now. <laughs> um, I mean, Mark saying rumours. Yeah, they're rumours, but there may be some truth in it. <laughs> but we won't go there. Um, I mean, Heine makes a good point. Only a bit, a bit worried about it right back. It's just seemed a bit shaky when she played the last season, especially against Chelsea LSV. Obviously, uh, Maria, I think, came in for that game. Um. Uh, obviously, because I was out at the time, so potentially any time Hannah's played Chelsea, I, I I feel like sometimes they've managed to get the better of it. Um, but yeah, I, I think what you're saying is quite quite reasonable. George and and Blundell swapping over in that respect would be a good balance. It's always nice to have a left footed left back and a right footed right back. I'll just point out that probably the best left back we've had. Um, was Dennis Irwin, and he wouldn't know how to use his left foot if you, you know, shook it at him. So, yeah, I don't know. I'd still go with Riviere. I know you're saying she's injury prone, but she arrived injured, and the injury is different to what she had before. So, I wouldn't quite put her in Darren Anderson territory just yet. But, um, but yeah, I'm a, I'm not that my my, my, my colours aren't nailed to the mask quite so much with a fullback, so I've got no major dramas. I've got Turner and Letizia and Blundell's in the team, so I can live with that. That's an L I can take. I'm not going to die on that hill. <laughs> there we go. Nice and easy. So it's not been too bad so far. Now, midfield, this is where we are probably, well, we are the most stacked I think we, we've been. Um, obviously, we saw a couple of outgoings in midfield and so on. Um, so player six and seven, obviously, you know, one could be slightly higher than the other, obviously, in this one. This this is just the formation that's kind of there. I can move them around depending on, obviously, where, which players we put in. Um, is there any certainty? Or in fact, I'll just ask you for kind of your midfield two, I guess, if, you, if you're picking a two or a three or or any two that are going in there. Who Thank you, Zellum's not there. We're done. <laughs> Barry signing off now. Um, I found this. I found this. I found the midfield three, as in the sense of I know it's about six and seven, but the six and seven and the ten, the most difficult bit. This was the most difficult bit, um, and this sounds bonkers. But if you think about how important she's been, haven't even written lad down in brackets, which I've just yeah. realised. Lad's not um, made mine either. And there's Someone twelve. Incredible. But like someone really good is not going to be sat on the bench as well, is what I've recognised. A couple of players aren't even going to be on the bench. Um, I've gone Zelly, who I think is going to get a thousand assists, and 127 of those are going to be for Leah Goldson. Um, <laughs> and I've gone. I've. I was talking to my my oh my friend about this sort of, and I just can't decide between a Guerrero and Nolson, which sounds bizarre because we haven't really seen either of them but they both feel like they have to start. For me, they're both starters. <coughs> I just don't know. And then I started trying to do something weird with the formation, which didn't work, because then I've got... I've, I've In the end, I've written down Zelly and Guerrero, is what I've written down. But I'm happy to be... Yeah, yeah Mike, what Mike Lyle's written. That was Riley Guerrero, sorry. I've got loads of friends, thank you, Deborah. Wow. They're all here. They're all here. I, I mean, Barry, what would be your kind of as Charlie said, this is the most difficult one. Oh, don't worry about what I'll think. Ask Vic, she's far more important. Who would she put in the midfield to? Um, this was really hard for me because Barry, you're gonna hate me, but I'm just not a fan of Zell. Oh, I know, but I never. There we go. That's that. That's dealt with that oh. one. I'm choking. <laughs> I'm choking. Just, right, get him off his centre and people now. Look. I just can't. I don't know why. I just. Listen, never. you're allowed to not have it. Who have you put? Uh, well, I have put Zell. Oh. I'm See, I'm now I feel bad. Now I feel like I'm confused. Yeah, but yeah, but this is what I mean. I spent loads of time in it because I was like, I don't like her. I don't like her, and I could have this and I could have that. But then in the end, I was a bit like, like we were with the defence. Like, I feel like she's captain, and I think she's a good person. I do think she's a good person. 
Like it's like with the England squad when Leah Williamson's a good captain because she's a good person, but I just don't rate her as a player. But anyway, I have put Zell and I've put Guerrero, whatever, how, however you say the name. Which is, you've gone with Charlie, basically. That's the same, yeah, we've got yeah, two yeah, same, the same. Yeah, yeah, same. But again, I was, <laughs> at Lisa didn't even come into my, um, again, I'm, I'm just not. I've got Lisa in brackets there, guys. Look. You've even drew little things as well. Look at that. I know, little icons. Little... No, I haven't... Mine's got a lot of crossing out. I'm like this. <laughs> Zell? No, no, no. Zell? No, 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 no. Yeah, okay, let's just do it. I started writing mine out and then I went to initials. That's that's just how much I was paying attention to that. That's more for my benefit than anybody else's. Um, <clears throat> to be fair, though, I can understand what the guys are saying. My brackets player was uh, Guerrero. Nelson did she entered my mind, but she walked out just as quickly as she came. Roughly about the same amount of time it took her to play in that one game and then get injured and, and not play for the rest of the season. So that's roughly how long she sort of stayed, stayed there for. Um me, that was that was savage, yeah. Uh Hayley Ladd and Katie Zellum were my seven and six. Um more because again I don't feel, when you think about football teams in general, I know people talk a lot about rotation, but actually <clears throat> less is more with that respect. Yeah. We don't need to make huge numbers of changes across the team. It's little tweaks that were needed. I didn't feel like the defence needed too much tweak, and it was literally just a case of replace honour because we don't have her anymore. Um, without the Mary Earps drama, 100% I'd have said Mary Earps immediately going in the goal there as well. It's only future-proofing that I'm thinking about there. Of course, if we're just talking about this season, the sensible thing is to put her in. Um, so for me, Hayley Ladd, Katie Zellum, put them at the two. They're used to playing there. They play together. And then you're in a situation where you can bring on when we're doing well or if we need to do um, the likes of Guerrero and Narsund, and that will give them the opportunity to play their way into the team, which, let's be honest is really how it should work. Um, I can't sit here and tell you if Guerrero and Nelson are better than Hayley Ladd. I'm very deliberately saying that because for me, um, regardless of what Vic says, uh, I, I, will, I will never agree with that. As people know, I am, um, I can't say I'm Katie Zellum's biggest fan because I'm only five foot one. Uh, and I'm sure there's some people that are taller than me that are probably fans of hers. But um, maybe with width, you know, um, it might be that. Cause I'm I am a little bit... Have... I wouldn't have anyone else's captain, but you've known my fault. You don't what, have to justify what, yourself. People cannot like it. You know, I'm not going to sit there and go, oh, you're a terrible you think person. About Guerrero and Lad. I mean, I wouldn't be against it. I'm willing to try anything. I know, well, um, no, no, you're not going to like it, Barry, but like, because there's no Zell, but I just, that's <laughs> what I had originally. <laughs> That's what I had. Well, Zelly does play pretty much every game. It's rare that she doesn't. May I but... add the, the all <laughs> 90 minutes as well? Mm -hmm. But I think if you get to like Conti Cup games, you are going to get to a point where you maybe don't want to play Katie Zellum for every game so that she doesn't, you know, get too fatigued. So for me, yeah, I, I've got no problems with her not playing every game. I just think, you know, your captain is your captain for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, and what she delivers set piece wise. Look at what she did for England on Friday. It was just inch perfect. She was you know. definitely offside. Just saying. She was offside. She was Bronze offside. for the goal, yeah. <laughs> I don't care. Thanks, uh, <laughs> Connor. <laughs> Not that I'm, I'm all about that really deliver. Not that I'm picking out little things for Zell, but like she was offside. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, that's not her the problem, though, is it? That's the person that couldn't run the line properly. So, mm. um, yeah, for me, that's it. Lad and Zelly would be my two. Um, like I say, just purely because we don't need to be making changes for changes' sake. It's yeah. about adding to what we already had. Let's not forget we finished second last season with a lot of these players in. So it's a case of it's got to improve it. And again, I can only go on the data that we had from last season. Um, due to the fact that I've seen absolutely naught of pre-season because, for some reason, we're not allowed to. This was a real tough one for me because I, I really do like Lisa. <laughs> but again, obviously got injured pretty much as soon as she started her United career. Guerrero is clearly a good player. You know, somebody obviously that we wanted 
in that swap with with Bo Risa. So I I get that, and you know I don't think she would have I don't think her she would have came without the assurances that she's going to get minutes. You know, otherwise she, she I don't think she would have accepted that kind of deal. Um, oh, this is a real tough one. I I think Zellum is in. Yeah, we've we've all said it, so I think I'll put her in as player seven. For me, it's the debate over that who's alongside her, and I think you've got a choice of three in Lisa. Guerrero and Lad, and I can see the arguments for all of them. I think Guerrero, as I said, I think is a fantastic option. I think Lad was exceptional last season. Um, oh, I think it goes back to that question I asked for Herbs. If we're playing Chelsea tomorrow, just because that's the hardest team in the league, and we've got to pick an eleven, which two are you going for? For oh, me, so I a... think I would agree with Barry and go for Zellum and Lad. But we saw last season, as good as those two were. We did, still didn't beat Chelsea last season. So do we need to try something different to yeah. get over that line against them in particular? And yeah, we need to learn how to play the ref. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Lanzar's made the point there. Lad and Lisa against Chelsea. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you do change it for a, a little bit more of physicality because that's what we know Lisa is definitely better at than, than Zellum in that respect. But <sighs> Lisa the tank. <laughs> Lisa the tank <laughs> engine. But well, she's not a fridge. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to know is who's the freezer? As we seem to be getting all of our white goods in. No, but she is like she is like. <laughs> what, what are we going to name these others? Zelly to me is a fence. You know, you just you, <laughs> you tell me. You tell me someone else that can body over Bunny Shaw like our fridge can, and I'll call you a liar. When did you last see a fridge body anyone? <laughs> when was the last Mayor time you saw an inanimate object just go sliding across and then just go whoop? I bet someone can make a video of that. They can superimpose a fridge onto her. Well, that's it. Mail a fridge, eh? That's her name. Mail a fridge, eh? You're going to see that like on um, TikTok in a few days. I've, yeah, <laughs> I've changed my mind, by the way. I've gone Zella and Nolson now. Oh, oh my no. gosh. This is what happens when you give her thinking zone. Well, Z- Zellum is in because we've all kind of said her anyway. So it's essentially who is going in at number six. So like I said, we've got a choice of Guerrero, lads, Zellum. Mia Zawa can also play in the midfield if we really want to throw her into it as well. Um, My thing is, we yeah, we came second and we don't want to change anything, but we've already not changed anything, apart from obviously Gabby George. But maybe we do need to change something. Like we, we did, we, I don't want to say this, but we were second, not, First, <laughs> John's going for an yeah, American that's fridge. My, that's my opinion. <laughs> You've started something now, Barry, on this one. Hey, <laughs> good, Millie Toaster. She pops up everywhere. <laughs> um, we'll come back to player six. Uh, are we? Just, I just want to get another unanimous. Because I'm pretty sure this is going to be unanimous. Anyway. On the left hand side, are we all going Golden in player eight? I am. Yes. Yeah. Barry, don't 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 be throwing like I don't know. <laughs> I see a bot coming here. For the purposes of my team, I have written down on the piece of paper, yes. Yes. So. Because she's on my piece that. of paper in that position. Um. So I'm going to come back to player six because I feel like that's going to be a, a, a debate in one, and obviously it really depends again who. I guess it kind of ties into player ten because I feel like this is going to be a little potential debate as well. Cause... Absolutely not. <laughs> well, I don't know who Vic has gone for. <laughs> um, being being local to the player that I think she's picked. <laughs> um, so... I've gone Tooney at 10. But that, again, that was hard because Mia's hour is in brackets also. It was hard. Like I'm not, I'm not going to say it was not hard. Like She did pop into my mind for at least two seconds. Like, but It was only two seconds. That is brilliant, by the way, that comment. Yeah. <laughs> Gas meter. I see what you did there. Go on, Dan. You're doing see? superb. Brilliant. It just keeps giving. Um, I agree. I think Tooney probably is the... Oh, it really depends how she starts the season, because yeah. if it's yeah, the Tooney just, of last yeah. season, yeah, but I would put me as out. Like, starting 11 tomorrow, what would it be? Well, Not I me. wrote down... Uh, I'm going to say it wrong. I didn't help myself. Miyazawa, that's the one. I'm getting the first Miyazawa. name mixed up. I went for her because 
Tooney's not been at it for a while. And even for England, she wasn't quite clicking as she could do. People keep saying she's tired. They can be all manner of things. But for me, I want to see what Miyazawa can do. She's the top scorer for the World mm. Cup. She played incredibly well. Um, and Ella Toon, you know, just was average, really, for the for the for the bulk of that. So I think for me, I'd like to see that. And that's kind of why I went for uh Miyazawa. So for me, I would be starting the season with somebody different. Um and give Tooney hopefully that desire, that work ethic, that sort of thing to get herself back into the team and to make it so that she's undroppable again. Um, but yeah, yeah, I would go Miyazawa. I think that's the problem. Shocker. I think she has too much desire. I actually think sometimes she just tries too hard. <laughs> she just stands there and she goes like this and she's like, I'm like, what are you doing? Well, I mean, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe it's just that she's trying too hard. That's what I mean. She needs to just get her natural game back. Um, yeah, and I think maybe the timeout might help. It might. This new improved potentially forward line, um, like a more mobile forward line, might help her as well. Yeah. Um, again, it's all it's all sort of pie in the sky. We don't really know, do we? But with it, it's potentially a much much more mobile forward line because um, Tooney can find a. A pass and a through ball and assist brilliantly. And she's going to have, I, I would assume, um, players who are making those runs, which which could help. But again, if if it was a two for two, two for me as are and two for two, I don't really mind either way. So I I would happily go for Miyazawa in that position. What are people in the comments saying? What's, what's everyone saying here? Um, oh, there's a here lot he of goes. What do you think, Connor? See, a lot of people oh, saying right wing, but I, I'm really interested to see who everyone's got up front and who everyone's got on the right, because I feel like mine's going to be Mine was pretty easy, to be fair. My, yeah, my, my striker and right wing, I, I felt, was pretty easy compared to the others. Me too. Um, but me too. But we could all be thinking completely <laughs> different things. You've gone for Williams and... Uh, and like ramped on at right wing, you haven't you? Or something like that. <laughs> Not today. That's just for Durham away. Not today. Um, I, I'm really torn on this ten because it really depends which Tooney we see on her day. Tooney should be starting. Can I just but say? We've not, we've not... Let me ask a genuine question. Genuine question. When did when, which game would you say was the last game with Ella Toon that you'd say she was really on her day? Spurs at home. Deal back in the last. Year. Spurs at home back in the last season. That? I mean, it was it was it was at the end of the season, but it I think was it like the third or fourth last game, something like that, where well, we beat him three 0 at home. But again, that was a change up team because Zellen was not in the team. Barry Reese started that one. Um, and yeah, played really, may I say? <laughs> <laughs> That's the last time I can remember. Anyway, um, I don't think she was great throughout the World Cup, and obviously, certainly not at the back end of last season. Um, oh, see, look what you've you've. Poor Dan, he's put Tooney in his fancy team. So we <laughs> Tooney's had a half decent preseason, though. You know, she has. Her and, her and Jace have linked up quite well. In three yes, years, they have. Was it thirteen goals in? Uh, thirteen goals. Th um, two goals in three minutes. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. That's, she has had a good preseason. To be very make a good, and, uh, from what I hear and from what we've seen, uh, the, li the very limited of what we've seen, think, she had um, she has linked up very well with Jace, so that could work for it in her favour. I think it's going to help her. Like she didn't start the other day, did she? I actually think it's going to help her having um, lot, dare I say, it, Lauren James um, fighting for her spot for the Lionesses for one. She's actually having to work for that now, whereas she's not really had to since like Frank Kirby was injured. She's literally just been, oh, it's Tunic because that's the next person you choose. And again, like through the Euros, she was the super sub because that's the next person you would choose. Whereas now she's actually probably the second person. She won't be the second person that I'd choose, but she's the second person that Serena's cho choosing because she's putting Lauren James and changing it around a little bit more. Um, she's having Zellin now and things like that. And like same now, United, last year, like, Mark Skinner's not going to change, like, put Tooney out of it to put someone else in it last year, whereas this year he actually could. She's going to have to fight for it more, which I think is going to push her even more. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the comments, an interesting point, point made there, saying Hidata at nine, Tooney at ten. Um, oh, I thought she was ranking them. 
It's a nine, it's a nine out of ten, but it's ten out of ten. I, I mean, can we play both? Can we put two and E at six and me as Sarah at ten? <laughs> See how that works. Can you imagine Tony in that position? I can't. No. I can't. I could. No, because you have me as Aaron as the eight and Tony as the ten, and Zella as the holding midfielder. Because she me as I was playing there as well. I uh, see. <laughs> she could play um, anywhere, to be honest. <laughs> but I wouldn't personally. I was only joking on that one. Um, <sighs> this formation as well that United do does Tony plays best in this formation because it's how she's always play, played. Lioness's formation, just she does not play well at all. At all. So, what's the, what's the, what's the split have we got here then? Have we, have we got two for two? Charlie, you said two as well, didn't you? And obviously, Vic, you have Barry. You went for me as our. Yeah, but so I'm, I'm all... used to being on my own. Let's just remember, I was the only one who said we were going to win the league and nearly did it. <laughs> so, people can make their own minds up as to who can be right. I will go for two for now, but again, always if she go with them. It, it, always go. You're such yeah. a. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like if she has a poor start to the season, I want to see her. It's too late if you have a poor start to the season, Connor, we got to hit the ground running. Just like we did last. Start out like the men have. That's all I'm <laughs> yeah, I, let's, let's, let's move this on. Listen, it's, it's not like I'm sitting there going, oh my God, Ella Toon's starting. That's it. We're all going to lose. She's a fantastic player. You're asking me to pick between a lot of fantastic players now. And that's mm. the difference between last year and this. Mm. We're not saying that person mustn't play because they're absolutely pony. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is, you know, if they're there, the other person's there. It's margins. Fine margins. And what um, a great play we've got on the bench. Exactly that. So whichever way you do it, whether it's Toon or Miyazawa, what players to bring on? Absolutely. I think that's the beauty. You summed up rightly there. You know, that's the beauty of it. Um don't worry about joining late. You can you can rewatch us. That's the beauty of these things, and uh, obviously appreciate the the kind words on on the nomination on that one. I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more at the end as well. We we did do a piece at the start, but I will just briefly mention it at the end as well. And Mike, I've come off the fence because if I was on the fence, I'd have said me as Aaron and left it to you guys in the comments to uh, to sort out the two each split. So I did come off the fence and uh, and stuck to in. Um, eleven and nine. Then. I think um, everybody should just get off of Zellum. I said she was the fence. Why is everybody sitting on Zellum all of a sudden? That's unacceptable behaviour. But for these two, that I'm going to tie it in together because Lanzal has literally said who my three is. I've gone for Galton, Jason, and Garcia on the right. Has <laughs> anyone disagree with that one? Or have you gone for the same well, as, as me? And Lanzal? Well, I did go Gaze for 11. Ooh. Gaze, Jays, Gaze, Geezer, Jays. Oh, this is very interesting. This That's why I put it in 11. <laughs> Annabelle and Maple Show, you have stolen the show tonight. <laughs> so, Charlie, I think I read that right. You've got Mallard up front and, and Jace on the right. Is that what yes. I just saw on your sheet there? Yes. I went the other way around. Um, yeah, just because we we saw last season with. It ended up being sort of more. I'm pointing at the screen here, like you can all see. Just so, Galton eleven and nine. If you think about last season, it wasn't. Even though they have those positions to start with as an attacking unit, it wasn't like oh, you two are the wide forwards and you're the number nine, like you're the striker. They were often playing across the front three. So even though putting Jace in at what is the nine, but is not really. It's a winger. It's the seven. Um, I anticipate that she would float inside as well. So I'm going for that. And I just feel like Mallard is going to regain her Leon goal-scoring form from a season back when she was banging goals in for fun. Vic, who have you gone for in that front line? I I don't want to say her name because I don't want to say it wrong, but... G, um, Jace, who are you going for? Jace, uh, um, player 11. And then I went for Garcia at nine. So you're on the same page as me. I like that. Is that what you've done? <clears throat> I did put Garcia initially. Um, in fact, Just fun fact, I've it. still got Garcia written down. I didn't scribble it out. Um, I have Mallard <clears throat> in brackets. 
And the reason why she was in brackets is because I wasn't sure if she could play on the right. Could she? I think she probably can. When I did the player profile show on her, Abdullah said that she can play across the front line and she is better from coming in from wide areas. So, oh, But there we go. I've That's seen her more me. as an out-and-out -out striker as well. So I don't know. For me, we I just quack think... her in on player nine and Jay's out front. Done. I just think sometimes maybe they need to like deserve the the start in eleven place, and I feel like Garcia last year dug us out of a lot of holes. When she came on, she really deserved. It. And like I feel like she is a good sub, and we could have her as you know as that good sub again. But I think she just deserves it. <laughs> That's what <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> these are brilliant tonight. These are. I'm going to write some of these down a bit, Connor, because these are genuine masterclasses. <laughs> but I do agree with what Vic was saying. I think I think Sarah has just put it in the comments. You know, saying Garcia on the right, she deserves it, and also had a good preseason. Again, she's hit the ground running in preseason. It seems well, so I feel like for me, I'd be starting her on the right. And putting you know, Jace down the middle. I do. I do agree. Um, but I also disagree. And I'll tell you for why. If you think about it, when we were going through last season, <clears throat> we could name 10 players immediately that were going to play. The one position we always debated as to who was going to start was that player nine position. Will it be yeah. Paris? Will it be Garcia? Will it be Ella Um To me... <clears throat> That was the one that if there was any position on the pitch that absolutely needed to have somebody new come in. That could be the one because it's the one that's for me most up for grabs. So I, in the nicest possible way, I don't really care, Connor. I just want to get them on the pitch and play. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to go with whatever Vic says and put it on that, on that one. Because Wally doesn't expect me to agree with her. No, you can't have male. No, we can't have that one because she's male. Frigia, we've already had that. <laughs> that is brilliant. Male Atisse is is very good. <laughs> this is a, that's a show in itself, that is. Um, isn't it? So I think we're pretty much agreed. Jace is obviously in. Um, you know, you don't sign a player from Barcelona for three hundred thousand. She doesn't start, so you know she is starting. <laughs> she's had a good preseason as well. She certainly has, obviously, hit the ground running as well. And, yeah, and so, that's what we need her to do. And she just needs to not fall over like the other one did. <laughs> so, <laughs> for playing that, are we, Charlie, are you happy with Garcia or, or do you want to put a, a strong case forward for, for not putting Garcia there and for somebody else? Um, no, I'm not, not happy with Garcia. She would have been my next in line. Um, I just, yeah, no no massively strong case to be anti her. It was just more, Mallard is a renowned goal scorer. That's all. And I just feel like Garcia... I think had her on loan, and that's quite yeah. a big thing. If you've got someone on loan and you just leave them, I don't know if there's a callback policy on that, but, you know, you kind of need her in there, I think. In that, and I was just about to say, if we don't put my lad in, then she's not in. Um, and just with and I suppose with Garcia as well, she was obviously last season she was most impactful, um, off the bench, um, and, and less impactful when she started, is, is all I would say. So, but just basing on, on that is why I made my decision. Um, she never but again, she no, that. not anti her at all. Yeah, I think Mike's made the point there, you know, in pre-season, uh, Jace has started as the nine, also dropping into the field, yeah. similar, obviously Kane does with the men, so you're going to need players that can get in behind to go past, obviously, the strike of Jace is dropping deeper. Goldson obviously can do that on the on the left. You need somebody on the right. <laughs> you laughing at Marcus's comment, mate, in chance. Really, sir, <laughs> no. I forget on screen, mate. <laughs> There's been some crackers in here tonight. Um, Nikita Paris is obviously a player that's not been mentioned as well. Another player that obviously did pretty well last season. I, I don't think she starts now. I think she, again, I think she's going to be really impactful off the bench. That's not a bad thing. You know, we need players like this. Look at how many players Chelsea bring off the bench that change games. Um, you know, from, 
from seasons past. So we need that as well. Um, I know what you're saying. Obviously, Mallard doesn't really play on the right wing. It's kind of down the middle or off the left. So I think if, if we're putting Mallard in, Jace moves out to the right and Mallard goes down the middle. So I think that's the conversation here. Are we, are we putting Garcia in the right or are we moving Jace to the right and putting Mallard up well, This is what I mean. Did Jace, when she scored her goals, was she playing in oh, the ninth wow. or was she playing yeah. on the wing? She, she started the time in the ninth. So that's where she's got to be. Don't want to start mucking about with it. She scored by putting her in that position. Mm, I agree. I don't think <clears throat> you should change whatever her name is. Right. Well, <clears throat> Plus, Does the you... off of a G. It's the G team. I was going to say, Lanzar's liking his 3G connection up here. I almost want to put Gabby George up there where Toon is now so he can get 4G connection because that's better. <laughs> yeah, it's better, isn't it? So if we don't have a forward that Another four would be with G, do we? I'm just trying to no. think. <clears throat> no. um, so Turner in, though, that'd be a G. Well, we did, we could potentially if we put Guerrero in at ten. Guerrero, <laughs> and then we have got four oh, G on there. Absolutely not. <laughs> so Absolutely. That, that does just leave one position then. Player six. Oh, back to the six. How exciting! Um, oh, let's just put let's just put Miazar in there. Let's just put her. Let's just let's just put her there. Is that just not a bit too far back? Yeah, I'm. I'm not. A fan put of two that. there. If you're gonna put Zara in, yeah. then you've got to make that a four-one-four-one for me. You can't have a four-two-three-one with Miyazawa or two dropped into the six. Um, if so you yeah. want to, if you want to play best football, she's not going to play the best football I'll be I think we've got to do something good with that six though because and obviously not being an expert I think that lineup at the moment doesn't look as strong as it was last year that is my only concern interesting observation because how, how we started we the show Guerrero that's the only other thing new we're going to have apart from whatever her name is at the top <laughs> let's just play five forwards let's do that Let's play. Let's kind of fiddle around with that six and Zellin. <laughs> Go on. Let's Excuse do me? that. <laughs> do that with it. Don't be rude, Connor. Do it's not good <laughs> you started it. Well, I, I can't see what you're trying to do. <laughs> she wants right, you to put not... Zellin right in the middle and put the six next to two. So no. you're, looking, you're looking more like so those two up there, those two kind of like that. No, 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 no. Yeah, you don't need a right hand side. You don't need a right hand side. Put Blundell <laughs> on the other side as well. <laughs> I, like, just, no, no, no. No. I mean, in, in, in formation or in possession, rather, that's probably how the team would look. Like when you're attacking, your team would that look a little bit like that. Tooney would probably be a bit closer. She'd probably be more <laughs> there. But, What's um, bothering you, Vic? The fact that they're not in line? Yeah, I can't cope with that. No CD's going on. <laughs> So I'm moving back. So yeah. It's not going to be perfectly in line, but. Well, who's better at playing? Like are we we're saying that someone we need someone. Where's Ellen? In my mind, Ellen to play. So who are we arguing Wait. over here? Play I don't six. know anymore. You I'm know, more I, shocked. I've only got one person in my head. It's Lad Guerrero or Lisa for me. I don't think anyone anyone else gets in there. It's one of those. Yeah, they're the only three options for that position. If you want I'm more shocked. Guerrero or Lita. I'm more shocked that Charlie said that team doesn't look as strong as last year. I'm, yeah, I'm, me too. <clears throat> my mind is just blown a little bit because we've just spent an hour and ten minutes. Oh, Barry, I make all sorts of I make all sorts of flippant comments all the time. Like this one's blown my mind, Charlie. This one's generally. I don't even, I don't even know if I meant it. I don't even know if I meant it. We right. need a world right. winner in the right now, then it will be strong. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start a poll because we could be here all night doing this. So I'm going to put a poll in the chat. You've got about five, ten minutes to vote this. Is it exciting? I think what are we going to talk about for five or ten minutes? Well, let, what, the thing that you just brought up, Charlie, the thing that's literally making me itch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> obviously, Blundell is not as good as on a Batier at right back. So I think we've accepted, though, that whoever we put in at right back in our current squad isn't on it. Isn't it? So yeah. we knew that. 
George, is she as good as Blundell at left back? No. You th who says no. no? Me. Me. Which is why, which is why I said put Blundell left back and Riviere right. But we'll ignore that because <laughs> this winter Barry isn't something we do. Right. Zellerman two. Same two midfielders. Galton, same on the left. Garcia, same on the right. So, like I said, we've not changed much. We've just taken Alessia Russo yeah, but, and upgraded her. But by throw her in the, the trash. <laughs> but, yeah, we have, yeah. But not necessarily. But Garcia, not necessarily the same as last year. Because I think, weren't we talking about the fact that the right-hand side, there was no one really... I'm just going to point out that I said put Mallard there. But, you, did, right. you did say put Mallard the duck there. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't like it, I wouldn't worry too much about me saying that, to be honest. There's no justification to it. I just said it. I think I've got over it now. I've got it out. Oh, right. System. Okay. Anyway, the answer to player six is Hayley Ladd. No, I know. No. I think it's the, me as well. The, the poll is very close. No. Oh, my God. I'll see you in a few minutes. I'm, I'm going to give everyone a couple of minutes just to vote on that poll. It is Why have you chat. written me as our or other? That's now not a fair test. Oh, yeah, that's not the other. That's a fair test. It's not a science. Who's project. the other? Yeah. Well, you could drop Tomb back there and then put someone else, like you know, maybe drop Jace in the ten and put Mallard up top, couldn't you? You could do all oh, kinds no, of things not... there. You need to put the names. <laughs> Shall I go and get the shoehorn again? Well, it's not though because they can play there. Barry, Barry. Yes. Because we're trying to fill time. I think I know why I said it now. Go on, then. Go for it. So I've had some self-reflection time. And yep. I've really looked within. And I think what it comes down to is that when we get shiny new things, in my head, I want all of the shiny new things I see. to play. So, And I just in my head, I thought, if we put all of the shiny new things in at once, the lineup looks mental, ridiculous. So, because I've just tried it here. Um, <laughs> so I retract that statement now. Uh, what, what I'm most intrigued is, is what is that 11 now that you've done that? <clears throat> so presumably that's PTJ in goal. Yep. What's your back for? I've got George. I've got Evans. I've had to keep, no. the, fridge. I've had to keep the fridge in. Keep no, I don't want in. Evans to play. Um, Evie Rabjohn. Why not? I think she can play at left back. What's everyone's problem? And then I've gone... Guerrero and Nalsund, they've never played together. She's that would be insane. Yeah. yeah. I've gone Miyazawa. I've gone Jace. And then I've got Emma Watson. And I've gone Millard. <laughs> and that would just be mad. But isn't it incredible that apart from one of those players, they're all new signings? Do you know what I love Can about I just what you say can I just get work. Vic? Can you say Mallard the same way that Charlie just did? Mallard. Mallard. <laughs> the way that you said it, as if I'm just going to go get Mallard out of the fridge. <laughs> Do a bit of cooking. Well, I just wondered if with the Northern Swang, that might be, like, you know, a proper Coronation Street type thing, but it turned out it wasn't. So, no, I'll probably say it. Yeah. I just say it like proper rough, me like Mallard. <laughs> it's not, no, it's just dialect. That's all. No roughness. Right. I think it's just a shiny new thing issue I've got. Just, just go. to let people just, just, just let people that? know in the chat. I've I've put a, I've started my stopwatch. Sixty seconds, so you have got about fifty seconds to vote if you haven't already okay. on the on the poll. Okay. <laughs> okay. Nerd. Well, then, what do you feel the fifty? Oh, that's starting eleven. That's starting eleven. You just read out. Although yeah. it sounds good, it doesn't sound like Manchester United, does it? No, it sounds nuts, doesn't it? It sounds like. Oh, and I would never like play that. I'll, you've got I would never pick that. In there. I'm sorry, but no. Oh old. yeah. Oh, that's why I've done it to go. What to think? To self-reflect and think. What are you? What is your problem? What are you talking about? And it's true. really, it's really important, boys and girls, that when you've made a mistake, that you own up to it. And you accept responsibility and you say that will never happen again until January when we sign some more players. Yeah. I do the same oh. thing. That's I do not I do going. not believe this. I'm not joking. We have got a tie for first. Oh, <laughs> shut the front door. Thanks. Have you actually turned the poll off and all? Guerrero and Lad are both tied on 39% at the moment. Then we just go with Lad. No. 
we don't. Oh. That's not different. That's we that's not that's not very democratic of you, Barry. <laughs> Between Guerrero and Lad, <laughs> Charlie, who would you pick, Guerrero or Lad? Have you not just listened to anything I've just said? <laughs> Guerrero, <laughs> really go for it. Guerrero, Guerrero. Yeah. Guerrero. Guerrero. <laughs> Go on, uh, Charlie. Are you going to go lab with me? I don't know. Um, or are you going to go and stick with the girls like you have done and be running for the rest of the day? I really like lad. Do you know what the thing is? When I, when I was when I was thinking about this yesterday, I had Lisa, which obviously is not the answer that you want to hear. An option now. It's an option. You can't have it. Get over it next. We've not even mentioned Rachel Williams yet. Come on. She can't play in the six. I bet she can. <laughs> she basically did in the cup final when she came on for two and she was all <laughs> pretty much alongside Zellum in that. Um kind of pick an egg, rare old lad. Well, lad is ahead now on the pole and by so a, a little Lander. bit. So I think we're gonna go for lad. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you got Tooney. I gave in on I that say, one. I say I say take Zell out. Guerrero and lad. Don't make me push that button again, Vic. <laughs> <laughs> I can only I'm take so much. I'm not uh, that I refuse, sorry. Yeah, I, obviously, this is just our opinion and just our kind of 11. This is hopefully not the 11 every single week because I would like to see Riviera, I want to see Lisa, and I want to see Guerrero, I want to see Mallard, and all these players. Do you know play. what's genuinely so, interesting about this? Uh, I think it's been a good time. We've literally only replaced the two that left. Yeah. yeah. Two that left, Battier and Russo. That's just the two that we've changed. I was just going to say, the only, the only Sorry, two yeah. things that we've changed is uh, we've made two differences. Is that going to get us from second to first? That's no. true. We've only no. changed the Queen and the other one. That's all we've done. <laughs> the Queen and the Joker. The Queen and the other one. The Queen and the Joker. <laughs> but the difference here is, so the difference here is, we talk about the fact that only changed those two. But if you if you look back at this requirement for, for game-changing moments on those those because we've beat so many teams now, but looking looking for that goal against Everton, obviously you can't account for a Scouse referee not doing a job properly twice. But you, you look at the options there, there's loads. And I think if a player's not performing this year, so if Toon's not performing or whoever's not performing, Golton, not that Golton doesn't perform, don't before anyone gets ideas, I'm not saying she doesn't perform because everyone gets cross about that when you mention her. She's brilliant. Yeah. But if a player's not performing, I think it's, it's fair enough for people watching to go, well, why isn't that person having a go now? Why isn't that person yeah. having a go? And some of the difficulties last year was that there was maybe no one suitable or who could offer more than the players yeah. starting, whereas I now know. absolutely is. Well. I think Charlie's bang on. She's back on form. She's got over her. Have bit. I pulled it um, back? Have I pulled it back? back? It's like she's right up there again now. I'm, I'm... Yeah, I, I, I honestly agree. thought we were going to have a lot more change than we have, though. Do you know... I don't know how far you guys have gone into this, but I've done my subs bench as well. And I, I can't work out because obviously there's nine subs, aren't there? You'll have nine, nine. I've even put times on my subs. There's <laughs> one missing. Like someone, like of these, so Tillis Joyce, if my go on my starting 11, Garcia, Riviera, Nelson, Paris, Evans, Aoife, Williams, Miyazawa, Lad. One of those isn't in the matchday squad. And we've not even talked about Emma Watson. She's in so, so. No, I know she's, but like I haven't even put her in there. So if you include she's her as well, she's fit. Two of them. Two of them. Yeah, I think you've both kind of epitomized, I guess, the conversation. You know, Sarah's saying, looking at the lineup, looking at who's left out, it's looking great for, obviously, depth wise. Obviously, Sophie's saying there, talking about we've got a better bench this year, 100%. I think that's the thing. We've definitely improved the squad. The 11, obviously, that's you know, to be seen. We don't know until we see this team against the likes of. Arsenal, PSG, and the on the first couple of games, so yeah. that's going to be the. the What's test. going to be telling for me now, Connor, is the times of the substitutions. It'll be really interesting to see <laughs> if it's left deep into matches again, or if things aren't happening after I don't know, pick an arbitrary number after sixty minutes, whether or not people might make the change a bit earlier. But it'll be very interesting to see how quick. I just wish my interested. only thing about um, Mark Skinner is I wish he'd use his subs more. This is what I'm saying. Last season, I don't think anyone had that in their locker to really say because I, I look back at the Conti Cup and they just weren't good enough. You know, that's yeah. the reason why we've got rid of, was it 21 players, I think we said, 17 on permanent and four on loan. 
that's mm. a lot of players to get rid of, whether they're through academy the side or not. The so, only time I've seen them make subs really like 65th or 85th, or if someone gets injured. Because like, he hasn't really trusted him. Mm. I get it. I get people's frustration, but I, mine was on the on the players. I just don't think they were at the level that they needed to be at. I'm hopeful that the, the depth that we've got now is much better. And that's what we'll see. And we'll yeah. see how much trust the people that he's got in this season. Because you like, look at Tunkara. She came in, barely touched the ball. Uh, Leon, Leon came in. Liana is not a person. Leon came in. And, well, it is a person, but not a person who plays Man United. Um, two players came in, barely, barely kicked the ball. So it will come down to the trust of the new players. And I just, I really hope. And no, not so drop Zellum who plays instead. Zellum doesn't get dropped. Unless she plays badly. Which well, is the yeah. same for every player. If she plays bad, I think it should be the same for everyone, not just because she's Kate Zell. Yeah, I'm all for that. Oh, gladly. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think it's... I don't, think, I don't know anything to add. I think, you know, when you're talking about the squad depth, I think it's much better. I just think it's a better team overall. Um, and I agree with what Barry said. I think last season didn't trust the players as much. This season, he has to, because if we're going to be in the Champions League groups, especially, you've got players like Mallard who have done it on the Champions League stage before. She's not coming in on loan to sit on the bench and not play. You, that's just yeah. a waste of a loan. But well, she's not starting. In our team, she might be starting for Mark Skinner. We don't know that yet. Well, we should be starting instead of Garcia, but. Don't worry, I'll talk to Skinner about that. <laughs> no, I don't think so. so we'll, we'll see how Ooh. that one develops. Oh, that's the middle one. I thought somebody had walked out then. I thought I'd upset <laughs> someone. <laughs> <laughs> just a couple of kind of quick fiery ones then, obviously, to, to, to wrap this show up. Um, just come to each of you. I've got, I've got three questions written down. I might have some more. I don't know. Um, who do you think our top score is going to be? Uh, for, you know, this is in all competitions as well, by the way, so not just WSL. So all comps, who's going to be our top scorer this season? Jace. On, Charlie. Jace. That's it. Yeah, Vic. Yeah, I'll defer into you first. I don't want to say mine. I'm going for Leah, full point, Galton. <laughs> I, I actually wrote down two. I wrote down... No, I actually wrote down three. I wrote down <laughs> Galton. I wrote down... G- Jeez, that's how you say it. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. And I actually wrote that, wrote, wrote down big comeback. Who? A big comeback. <laughs> I wrote down two, and I don't know why. But I think it's, <laughs> I literally wrote big comeback, arrow two. Nice. Right. But I think, I just think after the pre season, <clears throat> she's played one game two goals, three minutes, like, I was well up for a hat-trick because the, um, the uh, record hat-trick women's is Russo. I was like, come on, like, get another. Um, but, yeah, I wrote down soon as well. So, the two that you said on soon. Yeah, I think, for me, it's between Jace and Golson, I think. I think Jace will probably, well, those two will just start all the time, and I feel like if Jace hits the ground running, as we've seen her do for Madrid. Uh, before she went to Barcelona, you know, there's what hell of a player there. So I, yeah. I, I would probably say her, and we've seen her already scoring in preseason. So we'll see on on that one. Um, so the next kind of question is MVP. So on the thumbnail, it just says best player, but who you think our standout's going to be this year? Obviously, last year, obviously Honor was the one that got all of the accolades, and rightfully so. Um, who do you think is going to be our our Honor into this season? MLT. Ooh. Um, I've gone Jace for both, so I think top goal scorer, most valuable player. I wrote down three players. Oh, I did. <laughs> yes, I was struck. Oh, <laughs> Vic can have I'm three gonna... top goal scorers. I wrote down I'm three players that could potentially be our players. Oh, oh, I'm no, gonna no, share that trophy. <laughs> can we guess them? <laughs> Level of bullying on this channel. Um, <laughs> only five foot one, it's outrageous. You're a whole inch taller than me. Um, me, half, half an inch. I wait, you're five foot I'm, one. <laughs> there he is. I'm five foot one, yeah. Charlie's about five foot one and a half, five foot two. If she's had a couple of pints, we can round it up. No, you. sorry, six foot two. If she's had a couple of pints, she, she don't half play. Like the incredible Hulk. 
Wait, Vic, what, what, what's with the surprise? How Vic? tall are you, Vic? I'm massive, me. <laughs> are you, oh are you a very big fallon? I'm, yeah, I'm like five, seven and a half. Oh. Five, I'm seven and a half. half. I don't think that's ever been massive. You're like yeah. a whole 30 me. centimetre ruler, <laughs> tall of me. Right? Quite yeah, nice. I'm actually like quite big. How tall are you, Connor? Five nine, I think. Five. Ooh, I think so you're massive like as well. Massive. Something like that. Um, I appreciate so that, Vincent. By the way, <laughs> yeah, get you, get you, get your MVPs back. I had uh, Jay's who was one of my choices. Miyazawa. Oh. And Leticia. Oh. And I am going to, based on the fact that. You were being so rude about her and calling her a freak, <laughs> and the fact there are people saying that she can't run very fast. I'm going to pick May Letizia. Um I think so, yeah. she was standout player last year as well. I just don't think she got appreciated as much as she. Yeah, just think. I think people, people are saying she can't run really. very fast. I know. I thought that when you said that. Six foot in his high heels. Yes. Yeah. Honestly, that's how I did my ankle. I knew this was coming as soon as we were talking <laughs> about height. <laughs> That's a song in itself. There, God is good. It's two foot tall. <laughs> oh, someone start that at Villa next week, please. Oh, please. I will walk out. That's <laughs> 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 no, definitely. I'll do that. Me, I'm not bothered. <laughs> <laughs> um, my last one of the three kind of quick firing ones I had then is a surprise package. Somebody that maybe people aren't talking about as, as much that you think is going to surprise everyone this season and be one of our better players. And this can't be somebody that you can't say Jace or somebody like that. You know, it's got to be somebody that is completely, I guess, off the radar that you think is going to come in, maybe play a couple of day games. And, oh, Vic, look what you've started. Now, John will do it as well. <laughs> That's the thing. Um, yeah, it's, um... But um, yeah, somebody who you think is maybe going under the radar that is going to come in and and, and I don't know, surprise a lot of United fans. Gabby, Gabby George, Gabby George. Are we counting her because she's new? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you can count new, new incomers. Oh, we can count new ones. Okay. I think we've got a lot of new forward signings, and that's who people get excited about. Um, I think she's going to rip it up next season. Mm -hmm. And I also hope she does because how excited has she appeared in all of her interviews about this situation? <laughs> She's so excited. And I love how I think it's important to have like academy players in and around the squad and, and proper fans, which she is. So I, was I think say, her, that's I like, yeah. A fam she keeps putting on all the family in night kits and stuff, don't she? Yeah. So God, who have you two gone for? Of course um, you did. <laughs> and based on information recently received, I'm going to go Gemma Evans. What information have you recently received? Wouldn't you like to know? Keep your beak out. <laughs> Are you telling everyone that Maya's injured? No, Maya's brilliant. <laughs> no, good old fridge is fine. Fridge is doing games. Just needed to change the plug, that was all. Um, I hope you've not jinxed that now. <laughs> but no, I, I think Gemma Evans could be amazing. Just imagine that. Like, it's the same as we do it all the time. Think about how people are talking about Rachel Williams. I feel like Gemma Evans got the same oh. sort of treatment. And I just reckon that, yeah, there's going to be a moment she's going to come on. Maybe just, maybe she'll be the reason we win the Conti Cup this year, you know, or something like that. But I just feel like she's got the potential because we've spoken about literally everyone and really. Her name's the only one that's not been mentioned or bigged up in any way. So <clears throat> there you go, Gemma. I reckon you're going to be absolutely amazing in the four or five games that you play this year. She she also, I think she's a tank as well. well one time, girls. What, eh? Hey, pardon? <laughs> <laughs> she's also one to add to the tank squad. <clears throat> you know, what, Gemma Evans? Yeah. What type of tank, though? Pardon? What type of tank? Like Sherman? Panzer. Panzer, nice. That's ended that conversation, Connor. Crack in. I've not got a huge tank knowledge, I've got to be honest. Oh, 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 I'm waiting for Vic to say it. I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't know whether Vic said hers. Like, surprise. Oh. No, I've not said mine, but Barry, didn't you have two? 
Yeah, I did, but I'm discounting the second one now. So. Oh, who's missed out? Who was it? I don't want to tell anybody now. I'm quite happy sat here. Oh, I want to know. I'll talk to you backstage. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Never Evans is my person. That that was a you've, you've done the whole like there. good night, sir. Barry, you've done a parent thing there where you've just gone, we'll speak when we get home. I'm very disappointed. But I'm actually gonna tell you both because I have got to. <clears throat> one of mine was Millie Turner. I feel like she needs to I think she's really underrated for one. For two, she's really loyal. And I like that better. Again, she's just Man United through and through. I think her and Gabby George have played together before. I think that would be really good. And I think she's underrated as a player. And I think she knows that she needs to up a game even more this season to keep her starting lineup um place. And we've got a depth to um, replace her. And my other one, <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying this now because it sounds really stupid because I didn't even have any starting 11, but <laughs> I <gave> the lad. <laughs> she knew that was coming then. Um, yeah, I don't know why I wrote her down, but I wrote her down and I just thought, <laughs> why not? I mean, she's, she's going to be in there at some point and... Um, you know, she's been here, so she just needs to get scoring more like she didn't sit it. I think it's been some valid chance. I think <clears throat> the obvious one, obviously, is Watson. Um, I think we wait to see on on her injury front. But I think for me, I think Gabby George is a really good shout because I feel like there was a lot. I think you know there was a lot of a mixed reaction to her um, coming in. So I think you know if she has a really good start to the season. Um, but I, th- oh, I also old, agree with how old is Gabby George? 26. So did she play 27 in heels? <laughs> oh, that's she high, sorry. Millie, Zell and Tooney in the academy and Galton. Has she played with them all before? I'm, I'm not entirely Definitely. I'm not entirely sure. Definitely, definitely Millie. Zell and played with Millie. Um, Turner. Definitely. Yeah. That would be um, quite a good link up though. She's played with all three, four of those. Um, but oh, so, so I think her, I think she's a great shout. Mia Zawa is a, a good one as well. But I also think Tooney is a really good shout for surprise of the season because I feel like yes, this. Um, <laughs> yes. I, feel, I feel like this is a big season for her because she's now got even more eyes on her. She's obviously as a name, she's growing, you know, bigger than than any player probably in our squad alongside maybe Mary Earps. But I feel like Tooney now needs to step up to that level of a Champions League quality player we've seen it we've seen it in patches especially during the 21 22 season obviously dipped a bit after the euro so i feel like her, she needs to have that kind of 21 22 season again of the kind of the return in in numbers but also just on the pitch as well um so i think tune's a good shout as well so one of those three i'll let the comments take and i didn't on, say it on that one can I, is that going to be a surprise, though? If Ella Toon performs yeah, to the level that we know that Ella Toon can perform at, it's hardly a surprise, is it? It's not everyone's going to go, oh, my God, look at Ella Toon. Breakthrough season? No. We'll just go, ah, there we go. She's back. Okay, oh, surprise, though, maybe Fallon, because I think she'll start more than people think. And I won't oh. say any more. <laughs> well, um, the first game of the season, but never mind, we won't have to. Indeed. Um, so my kind of final question then, before we look to, to wrap this one up, because we have been going for an hour and 40, it's literally your predictions for the season. So I'm going to ask you to, kind of a two-parter. One, where are we going to finish in the league? And two, if we're going to win a trophy, and obviously, if so, which one? <coughs> Anyone can go first on that one if you've got an answer ready. Um, I may live to regret this after the first few games. I think we're going to win the league this year. So, yes, I think we'll win a trophy because we're going to win the league. <laughs> <laughs> Easy enough. Who wants to jump in next on that one? I'm trying to let you go first, but you don't want to. I will, uh, mm-hmm. I will side I'll, in with... I, um, I'll go. Um, I think we're going to win the league. And I think we're going to win it by one point um, just because I'm that precise 
And I also think we're going to win the FA Cup. And it's going to be double. And it's going to be against, yeah. And it's going to be against um, Chelsea. And Sam Kerr's going to go down and get injured. And Emma Hayes is going to cry. And then. That's. <coughs> not that I'm But it's just, you know, I dreamt about it one night and it's just still living in my head. Well, and I actually did. I'm not even anything. Just, I actually did dream about that and it's still going in my head. Where do you think we're going to finish, Connor? Um, second, but I think I, I think we'll win the FA Cup, and I really want us to purely because what Sarah just said there. I'd love to for us to go back to Wembley and win it this time around because last season, as good as the day was, that feeling was bloody horrible <laughs> when we lost and and seeing the players obviously so distraught after the game. I want us to go and repeat that, but flip the results and obviously win there. And I want it to be against Chelsea again because I want us to actually beat them. At, you know, I think it was worse Wembley. how we lost as well. Mm. Like, I'd have rather lost by five now, I think. But to be the better team and then lose, I think that's what made it even worse. I think we are going to finish second this season. I do. I also think we are going to make it to the Champions League group stage. So we will, I think, surprise people in that. And then we're going to get past the group stage as well. We won't just make the group stage. We'll make it into the knockout rounds. Uh, and I think people will be surprised by just how well we do in Europe. Um, I also think we are going to win the Conti Cup. And I think we'll probably make the semi-finals or finals of the FA Cup as well. So, in other words, I think we'll do really well in the Cups um, and we'll maintain. We'll finish second this year, not our year for the title yet. Well, you said first last year, <clears> so hopefully it'll... It will counter, it'll counterbalance yeah. it, that's for sure. Listen, I would love to be wrong. I think that would be a success. If we can win a trophy, get to, get to the group stages and then second or third in the league, obviously win it, obviously... Even better, but I think that's a success. I think that's the key this year. I, I just want to see us win something now. I think that's the next step. Conti Cup, or I don't even care if it's the Conti Cup. I just want to see us win something. Um, just to say, just to get off our back, really, that <laughs> this squad hasn't won something since the championship. So just to see that, I think it's the next step now. And it's more than capable of doing it. With the squad that we've got now, as we've just discussed for the last hour and 40 minutes, it's more than capable of doing just that. Um Right, we shall wrap it up there because we have been going for, an, as I just said, an hour and 40-odd minutes. Um, we are back on Wednesday. We, again, second of a, of a three-part preview, I guess, uh, where we, we'll be discussing the WSL in broader. So we'll be previewing the WSL. Obviously, we, Meg is back representing Arsenal. I think we've got a Chelsea rep and there's some other fan favourites coming back on, I believe, on that one. She's to get them confirmed. Friday, me and Baron will be back with Freya and Lindsay previewing Aston Villa. I think I'm, I'm not told Barry's on that, but he is. There we go. Barry's back on Friday yeah. on the cell, previewing Aston Villa. So, obviously, we'll dive into the actual game itself, talk about all of those kinds of things. A um, couple of things to shout out Predictions League. If you haven't joined that and you want to join it, um, go back and find our tweet. I'll tweet it again tomorrow. Um, that The entries to that close on Wednesday. Um, no entry fee, anything like that, but you do win prizes for the top three. And it's just a bit of fun. People, people loved it last year. So, if you want to sign up for that, just message me or Barry or the Orphan Night account. We'll put you into that. We have started a fantasy football league as well um play fantasy wsl they have also verified our league by the way as well they are some top top people there's only a few of them that run this they're now making an app as well which makes it a hell of a lot easier they are fantastic so make sure you join our league if you signed up to their fantasy wsl um and also obviously on the fcas we mentioned this right at the start obviously we are nominating into the final i have just had it confirmed while we we're on the show so you can tweet uh the who you're voting for, as well as voting on the website and on the Instagram post as well. So I'll put that in the description. I'll tweet it after this show. So follow us at all United WFC, and you can see all the instructions on on how to vote and things like that. You don't have to. It's just if you if you like what you're seeing and want to give us a vote, by all means, uh, we very much appreciate it on that one. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, and obviously listen to, listen to this on Spotify. I hope you've enjoyed. Make sure you leave us a, a lovely five star rating on there as well. That helps immensely. Trip advisor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I've got no funny response to that. I'm just going to laugh along with it and agree with you. Um, so make sure you're doing all those kind of things, and we shall see you guys on Wednesday.